Hey folks, and welcome to another episode. I'm Disturbian, and you're with me at Middle Aged Gaming. And today, uh, we've had this one asked uh, a few times, and we are here with Gimli. Let's have a look at his information. It's pretty good if you got this character. There's a lot of people who have been complaining about Gandalf and heal builds. He is a decent counter for that. So um, we'll see that when we get into the builds and the skills for yourself. But we can see his sheet. He is a, a warrior, so of course the same as Legolas and we've discussed before in Dwalin with the extra damage um, and physical damage and extra might. His starting points, heavily based on might. And look at that might, plus 2.38 per level. The focus just less than one and speed less than one. I didn't think about doing a sheet for this, but out of curiosity, let us have a, a quick look at Legolas's. Legus, Legolas's. Let's have a look at his increase per level as a comparison point. Legolas 1.8 per level. He has the focus, so his units end up being strangely better um, tanky, but uh, he, in fact, he has pretty decent stat increases for everything. P plus 1.8, 1.54, So we can compare that to that. So he's going to be out outperforming. So remember we looked at that comparison point between Dalin, Dwalin and Gimli. I actually think with these numbers and these figures, uh, it's going to be incredibly close between Gimli and Legolas for the damage builds uh, from those numbers that I did last time, if you remember. That increase should, should swing it. So let's very quickly have a look at his abilities. He has experienced warriors, and there's some of these tables we have seen before. We have seen this table before. If you're looking for a more in-depth discussion about these, I recommend taking a peek at my video on Dwalin, because two of his tables out of the four are the same. So I'm not gonna go into them as, as heavily as detailed as I did on the other one. I'm just gonna say he has commander damage up. He has uh, damage against melee units plus 10, plus 10 percent, I guess. Um, hunt down, which is that randomness of the damage dealt uh, might stacking sort of thing in future turns if you can hit the same units again. And normal tax cause an additional 125% physical damage. His other ability is different though at tier one. You have lock, uh, lock bearer. Lock bearer, he bears locks. Hello guys, I'm here for the battle. I bring you locks, make everything safe. Okay, whatever. You have sort of like a, a heal when hit buff, 30% uh, chance of recovering, 50% hit points when damage is sustained, and it's modified by focus stat, which is a bit blur. This table I am not a fan of, and, and that is the main reason. You know, it's it's okay getting a slight heal, 30%, so one in every three turns. Uh, it does affect two allied units, but then it recovers 50, but it's not a whole load, only when the damage is sustained. And it's modified by focus when it's maxed. I mean, who cares? You're not gonna have focus for him. You, you, you'd be mad to put any focus gear on a guy with this amount of disparity between all of his stats. You should definitely be going for might. Elves and dwarves damage received, minus 14%, and dwarf unit with the highest defense protects all. We've seen elven protect before. That's not too bad for certain builds uh, where you can have it. I like it when it's with a full table that's with a character built for that. Originally, when I said with Legolas, I said, oh, maybe Gimli would be the better one with the protect elf skill. After looking through his tables, I'm not entirely sure that's the case. I'm sure people will have fun with him. It's not bad when you can put like a unit of guardians or if you're dwarves, you can put your tier four units in there. You can tank like hell and then you can put some elves in the background, some, well, if you're elves, you can put march wardens, otherwise you put like sentinels and you can get some reasonable, decent damage going at the same time. So it's not too bad in the damage debuff. I just don't like that lock bearer, especially because of dwarf protect. So Dwarf Protect, I'm protecting all of my Elf units with my Dwarf unit with the highest defense. All my damage is going on that. Then two allied units, 30% chance of recurring 50% hit points. So one's wasted because the back unit is not taking any damage or the other melee unit. So for me, this is a bad table and I do not like it. And it's why at tier one, I'm not a huge fan of him. I think he's too, too, too mixed. 
at tier three again we have Dorian's blood this is another of dwelling skills as well we've got skill damage plus uh, up in combat plus might and then we have two skill attacks for an attack twice bam bam uh, physical damage on a uh, two round cooldown so you get that three times per battle and all in we get that two times per battle and it's going to deal 750 percent physical damage in one attack um, but it reduces the next damage by 50 percent i would be interested if you have this and you have this build uh, on a character and you check your logs for your battle logs please let me know when does all in go in as a skill does it always go in at the end i should probably test this out does it always go in at the end in which case it's not too bad if it goes in earlier or mixed up with his skills, we'll see a problem, and, and I'll explain that when we come to some later builds, but it's mainly the fact that if it kicks in on that round three debuff turn, a cooldown turn, there are other skills that you will get with a, with a round three turn, and if there's a chance that all in goes first or earlier in the turn, then it will reduce the next damage dealt by 50% and, and mess up with one of his attacks. So yeah, let me know. Let me know if you've done that. If you've tried it, you've checked your, your log stats, see where does all in kick off on his skills. If it's last, it's okay. Otherwise, we also have problems. At ability five, we have Lord of the Glittering Caves. Now, this is this is our counter heal. For those complaining about any healing builds, Arwen or, or Gandhi or any of those things, his first ability against enemy melee units. So again, he, dwarfs tend to have that with themselves. The bonus add extra damage to melee units. They're pretty solid at that, um, especially if you can put. Um, Jundalanes, whatever they're called, the, the back, the, the, the melee guys who do extra damage against ranged. It's a really potent combo, that. Uh, the army damage from melee units, minus 5%. Block defenses. So he deals 260% physical damage and defense, minus 30% for one round. So that's pretty nice. That will kick off in rounds 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. You've got a little bit of a defense debuff for the opponents. Open wound. This is the power hit. Now it's three turn cooldown, so you'll get this in turns four, and you'll get it in turns eight. Attacks one enemy target, deals with 490% physical resistance and cannot recover hit points for two rounds. That's not too bad. So you're gonna hit him, and you've got like one, two, turn, two turns where they're not gonna be able to heal from those heal effects and it will mitigate some of the ability. Unfortunately, it's only against one tar enemy target, so not a good against, you know, maybe ones where they're, they're max healing all across the board. Sorry, I got a bit dizzy there. I'm still a bit sick uh, and but it is a nice it's a nice way of having some sort of force against heal builds into our build options again this is going to take a little bit longer than the other ones because he has so many combat tables there are more variants so we'll start off with this very simple tier one again this is a table combination that i'm not a huge fan of Four attack buffs. So he's got his normal attack damage plus 60%. Of course, he also does his self damage against melee units. He has that sort of like damage debuff from Hunt Down where he weakens the enemy, which means you'll do more damage next time. Collaboration, so he does extra damage again. So all those are boosting up your damage on the top. Sort of like you're getting whole loads of uh, four pretty much extra buffs for damage on the top. The bottom, you get that two allied units with the heal, but we have the Protect Elves. So our second unit is a waste of time is modified by focus, which we're not gonna be going for. So that's a waste of time. And elves and dwarves damage received minus 14%. I'm not a fan of this combination. It doesn't link, it doesn't work together well. So for my, me personally, I will not really be using him as a tier one commander. I think something like Dwalin works much better at tier one than than, um, than Gandhi does. I mean, than Gandhi, than uh, Gimli does. Moving on to his combination of his tier three and his tier ones. We have some nice mixes. Now, no surprises. Remember I said two of these tables are exactly the same as on Dwalin. So if you've watched Dwalin's video, you will have seen me bring up this table before and go through it with Durin's Blood and Experienced Warrior with Whirlwind all in Hunt Down and Collaboration. And look, we have Durin's Blood, Experienced Warrior, Whirlwind all in Hunt Down and Collaboration. I don't want to spend too much time again on this one because it's the exact same combination that we've had before, but we see this is the one that I use for the comparison point of the damage against Legolas uh, with all of the commander buffs, enemy debuffs, and the attacks uh, that we can have. It's not bad. It's not bad. And it will work better than Dwalin's because of his increase to uh, might per level is much better. Yeah. His other side 
has this horrible lock bearer combination which for me I would not even go anywhere near but we can see at the bottom that's number two three damage attacks heal on hit damage debuff and elven protect and defense but get, why why would you go on that side why why would you be taking because you're gonna take have to take lock bearer to 15, 14 to take protect elves I'm oh, sorry I suppose you could take sorry you could take lock bearer just up to two and then you could get protect elves because you're not wasting the points with at level one, you, you're a bit screwed. You have to pretty much take Lockbearer and Durin's Blood Rune. They're the only two skills that you have, so you've just got to pull all your points in at 50 to have them both. But in this one, there is a tempting option where you could go with your attacks. You could go with Lockbearer uh, two points and just take one point in Protect Elves because the skill will work. All of your damage will go into your Elves, and then you could boost up your attacks with your Experienced Warriors. If you've got him leveled high and you want to go with this combination, that's probably not a bad place to put your extra three points in just to make sure that all of your DPS and units are surviving and they also do a lot of extra damage. Yeah, it's not a bad mix, but I, I wouldn't invest fully into these tables. You don't want Lock Bear and Max if you've got Protect Elves. They, they did, it's just not a good combo. Oh, there we had a look at that one. There are three options then for our counter heal builds that we were looking at before, because we know that Open Wound is a nice debuff for heals. So where can we go with his combinations? Well, counter heal tank we can have at Lord of the Glittering Caves and Lockbearer. Again, not my favorite combination, but don't forget, I have just said, if you've got the extra points at the end of filling those tables, which you kind of will do when you have a high enough respect level, you'll have, I think it's respect uh, eight or something is when you will have enough to be able to fill out two full tables and have three bonus points. Next, I think you fill them out at commander level six. Commander level six, so six, seven, eight, nine, sorry, commander level nine. So if you hand it commander level nine, you could end up going into protect elves, get that protect elves at one, then take Lord of Lifting Claves and any of the other abilities that are coming up, any of the other combinations. But for me, I would not take this combination. It's a waste of points for every reason that I've already explained. So where could we go? Heal counter power. This one buffs your commander damage considerably because we take the against enemy melee units buff up. We take the deals damage from break defenses in the open wounds, which are two damage dealings, reducing defense and reducing um, and stopping heals. And at the same time, we take experienced warriors, which has two boosts to normal attacks and also the debuff, uh, the increased damage buffs in future turns. So it's kind of not too bad here. We're focused all on our normal attacks and we're increasing them across the board. It's going to mean that we're going to be doing good damage and then those skills when they kick in are also going to be doing reasonable damage. Yeah, it's not too bad. This is a good setup without worrying about cooldown overlap because all of the experienced warrior abilities are always on. There is no cooldown effect for these. We don't have to worry about that, over, that overlap of our skills. On to Gimli 5.3, and again, I've not tested this enough. If you have, please comment and let me know somehow, and I, I would be interested to know. I don't have him at this level, so these are loan pictures that I've, I've received of other people. Uh, I want to thank Jackie Moon and Red Archer from my, um, my, my fellowship that have offered me and provided me with random different pictures and things that I don't have access to. If you look at this, this is his counter heal skill, skill, skills damage. It's all skill. Look at that right hand side. They're all skills. So the left hand side we have our damage dealt against melee buff up, damage from melee units debuff down, and our skill damage plus 35% during combat. So all of our skills, this is a nice combo then. Durin's blood is increasing our skill damage during combat. All of the right side are skills. Tasty. Every single one of them is gonna get that buff. Plus the might plus 15. So now let's look at those cooldowns. Break defenses, we've seen that before. Damage down, 260% in turns two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. Open wound, does that damage? They stop healing in turns four and eight. Whirlwind deals 300% physical damage prioritizing the melee units that you have your buff from in your Lord of the Glittering Caves. That kicks off in turns three, six, and nine. And then we also have our all in, one enemy target, deals 750% physical damage once, but your next damage dealt is reduced by 50%. That's gonna kick off in turns four and eight. And this is where I said we have like a little bit of a problem because open wound and all in both overlap with our turn, um, with our cooldown 
Yeah, they're going to kick into in in turn four and and eight together, and break defenses is also turn two, four, six, eight. So those three skills all affect in turns four and eight. If you have this build, like I say, let me know, try it out, and I want to see what happens with the with exactly the the, the turn order and, and and what hits what. If all in always hits at the end, that's good because all your skills go off. Then you'll do your normal attack. And that's his damage dealt by 50%, and we're not too worried about it too much. If there's potential for an overlap, then it's problematic, because if this kicks off, and it kicks off at the same time as Open Wound, then you're actually going to be losing, um, you know, or maybe it won't be too much bad. Reduce the next damage by 50%. Yeah, maybe it won't be too bad. You just take the debuff no matter what it is. But let me know. I, I, I would still be interested to see those figures and see exactly where that, those skills kick in, just for... for Curiosity, anyway. Maybe that isn't too bad, I suppose. Reduce an extra damage dealt by 50%. You, you can probably get away with it. But I like this. Yeah, I like this pure skills, pure damage, everything kicking off. Really, really tasty. I like both of these. I like this one. Uh, and I, uh, I, I like both the Gimli, the last two skills we've talked about. So basically, uh, these two. Yeah, the the heal counter power attack, and uh, and the the counter heal abilities over here. These two are both tasty. Um, I don't know which people prefer who have been using it. Um, and if I was bored and I use this character a lot, I suppose I could probably do my maths on this. But um, we will see. I mean, I don't have him, so I can't really play test to make sure my figures are anywhere near. But. Um, Interesting to see whether you should increase your skills and power up or whether you should increase your just normal attacks and see where it goes I have a feeling that the skills attacks will probably end up being better um, But a tasty a tasty unit all together I suspect the best counter against this character by the way would be something that would cause madness Anything that can make him potentially attack his own units with all of his attacks would start to cause problems because then you're not guaranteed those stuns and the defenses downs and the cannot heals there's there's a good chance that you start causing anarchy in your own lines but um there we go thanks for watching as always next up will be aragon hopefully over the weekend uh, comment like subscribe say hello and i will see you next time